Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zs Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here on site uh, in San Jose at the San Jose Convention Center at Zoomtopia 2023, which is, of course, Zoom's uh, user conference. Now, I was looking at the list of sponsors, and I saw Juniper was on there, and I thought, what's Juniper doing here? So, Tarek, uh, I'm here with Tarek Radwan. You, uh, what, uh, what do you do at Juniper? So, I'm yeah. a director of product marketing here at Juniper and super excited to continue the discussion and talking about what we're doing from an AI perspective and how it intersects with what we're doing with Zoom. Yeah, well, so what I think of Zoom sponsors, right, you know, there's, uh, you know, endpoint companies, there's network, you know, there's other types of companies, but there's not too many networking companies, right? And so, uh, why is Juniper here? Why did you feel it was important to be part of Zoomtopia? Yeah, uh, obviously, a lot of companies now are depending on uh, Zoom for their uh, for their conferencing and the experience of that Zoom call is becoming top of mind. Every CIO is hearing the the number of complaints that are coming to their help desk yeah. about you know the quality of that experience of that Zoom call. It's jittery, or I lost communication, or not everybody saw the screen share. So it's becoming much more uh, top of mind, or it has been, especially since. Uh, the pandemic in a couple of years, right? You know, one of the things I've always said about uh, uh, when you have these online meetings is that bad video is more disruptive than bad audio. With bad audio, you can kind of work your way around it and, uh, you know, interpret what people say. With bad video, it's, it, all the, the blocking and stuff can be very distracting. So, well, what is the cause of some of those things? Yeah, so as we know, data is very data, video is very data intensive. Yes. Um, and Especially in an organization when everybody's doing it now. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And the network becomes the uh, the um, the lifeline of how to get that data, that video across, uh, and so it all comes down to how that network is performing and how it's serving um, that experience. Uh, and so things from the time that the user connects to the Wi-Fi and how that's um, then transmitted across the wire and then across the other sites to the SD WAN, for example, all of that's going to impact that video experience. Um, yeah, and I think one of the important things you bring up here is when you think of a video experience, right, it's the end-to-end -end network. In networking, we sometimes think of the Wi-Fi network, the campus LAN, the data center, the WAN, but to a video call, it's just one network. Yeah. And if there's one piece of that that's not working, right, the, the, the whole call is not going to work, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so that's where what we've done is we've joined that Zoom data about say the the jitter of that uh, the call, the um, the 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 packet loss, the latency. We've joined that data with the network data uh, to understand exactly what is the impact from the network, all parts of the network, from the wireless into the switch uh, environment out to the SD WAN, uh, to understand and to train the network and help it learn. What are the things that can cause a bad, say, video experience across the So you're the actually pulling data from Zoom, though. It's yes. not just interpreting it from network data. No, yeah. Huh. So essentially, we've taught the network to the point where now, even without that Zoom uh, data being fed to it, it knows that, hey, uh, you've connected to the wrong VPN. You're going to have too much latency. Connect to this closer VPN. Or there are too many people connected on the Wi-Fi right now. You're not going to have a good experience in this part of the building maybe go to this other conference room that doesn't have as many people congesting that uh, the network resource. Okay. Now you use the, uh, the two letters AI before, and yep. you can't go to any show without hearing about AI. AI, of course, is a big part of Zoom now, um, with you know, generative AI and uh, yep. AI insights and things, right? So how is Mist or Juniper using AI to help network engineers actually manage these environments better? Yeah, so what AI does is it, it really brings the insights and um, the, uh, the information and visibility about the network experience, the user experience, at a much faster rate. Faster than what a, uh, a network engineer working on their own can do. Because what it does is it, 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 it acts on that data, processing it through uh, complex uh, machine learning algorithms and learning about that, that network in a much quicker way such that it's able to provide those insights um, and to identify anomalies in the network that are impacting user experience. That's the power of AI. And so what are the kind of things somebody might see? Uh, in terms are of- Are there more common ones that, that from what you've seen? Okay, so- Well, Wi-Fi's gotta be one of them, right? Wi-Fi is, yeah. is a major one. 
Uh, so for example, when a user goes to connect um, on that Wi-Fi network, um, how long did it take to connect? Uh, what are the things that are impacting that? Um, and oftentimes, you know, it, we, we take it for granted. Yeah, there, there's going to be some authentication things, like did it reach that DNS server in time? Uh, was the, the, uh, the certificate up to date? So those are things uh, we take for granted, but uh, when there's an issue, the AI can quickly identify those issues and bring them to the forefront for the uh, network uh, uh, team to, uh, see the, to see right see away. The problem with Wi-Fi issues is uh, nobody knows what the heck causes them. Yeah. Right, it can be anything from the access points too far, from DNS not working, and so I've always said that Wi-Fi troubleshooting is the hardest thing to do in networking. So, yeah. so you're running a demo here, right? What are you showing at the booth? Yeah, so what we're showing is some of the uh, capabilities that we've, we've built in with uh, the, the uh, connection with uh, Zoom, and here we have Marvis, which is our virtual network uh, assistant. And you can see- That's your like, generative AI. Interface, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it understands natural language, so you can simply talk to the network and ask it, do I have unhappy users? Or, or in this case, troubleshoot this Zoom call. Why was the Zoom experience uh, suboptimal? Why did this user complain about it? Uh, and so you could see here that it's showing the full stack from the time the user connects um, on the Wi-Fi out to the, uh, the, um, the wired network and then out to the Zoom service. Where in the network, um, did the network uh, not perform to uh, where it should have been? Or if there are other issues on the network that are impacting that Zoom experience or that Zoom call? Yeah, so I see some of the examples list uh, all the Zoom calls the last seven days, uh, you know, things like that. So you can yep. actually get specifically down to why this one call work and other ones not work. Yeah, and in this case, for example, uh, this user was having a poor roaming experience. The fact that they were just walking across the hall while they're on a, on a Zoom call, um, that was a poor roaming experience, which impacted that video session on Zoom. Awesome. All right, Tarek, well, um, just one last question then from, uh, where do you see AI going in the future as, as part of networking? How do you think it's going to change uh, yeah. the network engineer's job? I definitely believe that it's forcing a paradigm shift away from our network engineers and our network engineering customers relying on a CLI or even conventional dashboards, and instead depending on these Gen AI uh, products, including uh, solutions such as Marvis, where you simply go and ask the network, tell me what's wrong with the network. Um, and in addition to that, now the AI can proactively identify issues uh, before users complain, before uh, you even uh, uh, go to the office and see what's going on. So definitely the way that our customers are going to be operating those networks is going to change, and AI is bringing that. So AI is not just for people to create Beatles songs, right? No. Nope. It's actually going to change the way we run our network. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, Tarek, well, thanks, for, uh, uh, thanks for that update on uh, what Juniper's doing. If people want to learn more about uh, Juniper's AI engine, where can they go? Go to juniper.net and uh, you'll, you'll land it at the right place. Okay, and I'll include that in the YouTube description below. So on behalf of Tara, I'm Zias Caravallo from ZK Research saying thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on another ZCast.